Hi everyone. Today I'm going to go over some fur techniques. I know that it comes up a lot in the group um, with the tool. How do you, you know, how do you paint fur? Um, what are my options? Um, what can I do to do fur in the game? Um, and unfortunately fur is just not one of those um, super fast and easy techniques in the tool um, because it's something that you actually have to take control of and paint. Um, they do have one fur preset sort of 2D flat pattern uh, which you can find uh, if you go into um, fabric here and go down to faux fur. There's a couple options. There's there's this one, this one, which, you know, of course, looks the most realistic. And then there's these these uh, other sort of interesting textures. And, um, you know, where you control how the intensity of these patterns is in the fabric layer. And here in texture opacity, you can make it, you know, more or less strong depending on what you want um, but it does look quite um, flat it just looks very flat um, and then also you don't really have control like say we wanted it to be like a brown fur um, And we want it to be really strong. I'm going to turn down the shadow so we can kind of see what's going on here. Um, even with texture opacity on high, um, it still just doesn't 100% give off a really strong um, 3D kind of vibe or soft fluffy vibe. I mean, there are certainly some things you can do if you're feeling kind of like, ah, I really don't want to get in here and paint fur. I don't really want to deal with this. Um, well, certainly you can come in and, you know, try to, well, well, it's not, let's get kind of a curve line. You can try to come in here and add some, you know, some highlights, you know, follow these these lines um, you could maybe come in with another brush layer and you can go in with a lower softer the soft brush on a low opacity and flow turn down spacing and grab this base color and kind of just go darker and you can always come in and add some of your own you know shadows here and there um, you could try to make it you know seem like it has more dimension but honestly to to really enhance this flat texture and make it seem special is honestly just going to take a lot of work I mean it's to me it's the same amount of work as some of the other techniques, but this is an option. Um, you could maybe go in here, try to, you know, well, you should be on a new brush layer if you're, if you're adding highlights. Uh, but the pr the, again, like just the problem with kind of enhancing like this is um, it's just never gonna be, you know, 100% realistic. Uh, but this is, you know, this does exist. This is an option. Um, there are some things you can do with this. Um, but however, for, for me, I just, I find it to be too limiting and, um, and I don't love it. Um, but I could also, um, 
leave it as a base fabric layer um, just so I kind of keep track of um, what I'm trying to do with my garment. Uh, but instead, I'm going to show you, um, oh, wrong color, wrong color. I'm going to show you um, how I paint it. And there are definitely, I mean, there's just so, there's so many ways to paint fur. Um, but it's just one of those things that it it's, takes a digital painting perspective. It takes patience. It takes time. Um, but it is possible. So let's, let's get into it. Um, I'm going to paint on the handy invisible detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here into details and grab this red square. I'm on the torso layer and I'm going to expand it and make it big. So I get this whole section. And because I'm going to try to keep and I'm going to do things at the same time. For the purpose of this jacket, I'm actually stretching it out across the left torso as well, instead of just doing a left torso box. So again, I'm turning down every everything in the layer to zero. Dragging the brush on the top. I'm going to make some new brushes. OK. And uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to grab my first brush. Um, I think for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to stay in brown, but just you, th these, this technique can be done in any color. Um, so the, the main brush that we use for some soft fur is this uh, sort of sp spiky, fuzzy brush down here. And you're going to make sure that the spacing is off. Um, you're going to actually turn it down. Because remember, when you're painting on the invisible layer, um, these little spiky edges have this kind of strange gray border. And that's just part of the um, transparency issues with, the, um, with having this detail. I don't really know. It's some sort of tech thing that I don't understand with the tool but it's there so the smaller even though I mean you can do a bigger brush you know just to kind of get this color in here but when you get to these the edges of these um, of the coat you want to you want to get down to a small size you don't want extra extra large spiky stuff on the on the edges here so I'm going to apply just the base coat, base coat color, which is going to be this sort of chocolatey brown. And I'm going to paint it everywhere, except the edges. Just get it down. Oh, I went too high. I gotta be careful. because I do want this base coat uh, to be my template. Okay, now that I've got most of the color down, and I'll actually take a minute to get some over here in this left side as well. Oh. Okay, I gotta be careful. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it down. Let's see what a 12 is. 12 is a little bit small, let's try like 17. Yeah, 17 is pretty good. Uh, and again, like, you got, you got to think realistically, like, you know, the dimension of this coat's not going to have, like, some huge spiky edge, right? Okay, so I'm getting some fuzzies going here. Some little fuzzies here. And I'm trying to... every little nook and cranny and um, I have to be really careful when you apply down this this layer like see how I just kind of wobbled out 
this is not really the the kind of brush and I've explained this before that this fur brush is just not something you can come in and erase and start over with this this fur brush is um, you kind of have to treat it like a one and done thing so let's check on the model make sure that you're you know you do check your placement and you really get in there because the spiky edge we don't have any kind of like matching eraser spiky edge eraser that could get into those nooks and crannies and it just throws off your your um, fuzzy edge line like really badly so it's just one of those things you gotta be really careful when you pay when you put down okay and if you do know that you're gonna just go straight down and you don't want it to be you know very irregular you can put down like one dot of your brush like where you want it to be and then hold down your shift key and go do straight down um, to another dot at the bottom like I'm holding my sh I put down a little dot here I'm holding shift now I'm gonna press down right here and you see how it just does like a perfect line that's a nice little if you go over that here in this help section um, under painting and brushes and stuff okay so yeah if I just want a nice straight edge I'm gonna put down my dot hold my shift key and carry that line up where I want it to be and that's well, that's good enough for this for what I'm trying to teach you okay so I've got my base color down and you do not want to stop at this point. At this point, you, you got to be thinking your next step is going to be shadows and highlights of this fur. So go to your next brush. Your, um, this is now we put our, down our base color. You want to be doing the next stuff on a new brush. And you can make this brush a little bit bigger because we're not going to go anywhere on the edges with it right now. But we are going to go and add some shading. So I'm not going to go to black. Remember, shadows aren't black. They're just different, darker colors of the same base color. So I'm just going to go down a little bit. And um, I'm actually going to turn down opacity and flow. So this is like um, how much paint do you have on your paintbrush and how much do you want to put down? So I don't want that much paint and I don't want to put it down very hard because what I'm going to do right now is um, kind of softly add, and you can see it's very, very soft, but that's what we want. I'm gonna add in some color variations here. See this little ripple? There might be an, a natural shadow here. Another one in this little rippled edge here. Okay. And so I'm sort of dappling in this color, and you can tell. Look at it, it's art. Look, look at the difference, with just a little bit of this darker color dappled in. So we're starting to get some, you know, some texture variations. Into this, kind of this fur, because fur does have multiple, many multiple shades in it so for this brown I want I want to do that okay and I'm already thinking ahead right I know I'm almost done here with this one layer so I'm already thinking ahead of my next color I want to add another brown in here that's sort of like kind of like the base color but more of like a kind of like a mid-tone so my base color I think
think it's this brown here. Yep. Or is this a light? No, this is a bit lighter. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. So I'm adding in, again, I'm just sort of dappling in. Maybe right here where this highlight is for sure. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go too far over the dark colors that I just did. I'm going to look for these empty spaces here. Maybe this is just more on this edge. It's not like going, because this is going to be darker underneath where the sleeve is. So maybe I'm just putting this sort of mid highlight tone just kind of on the edge here. I'm going to go back to my dark color and I'm actually going to, I don't, I don't need darker. I just need more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase how much and the pressure of it. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to make sure I get in here and really focus on getting this dark where I know that there's going to be a bit more of a shadow on the jacket, okay? This under part. So now if I look back at it, there's definitely some definition here. So let's add a little bit of those highlights on this side. Definitely this chest area here. Okay. <coughs> so now I've added some of my base base kind of fur layers here. I think I'm going to, um, I do need to go in and get just a little bit brighter brown and check around in the oranges because the color you need might not be where you started it. Kind of looking for a, a warm beige, which is always such an interesting color to find. Let me, uh, and make sure you're on a, on a new brush for this one. This one should be on its own new brush. Let me go up here, because I'm looking just for some sort of really light, special highlight fur right up here, where the light is going to hit the most of the jacket, like right around her chest area. And it's almost too much. I gotta be careful. If, if this happens, just go in with your base color and kind of paint over it and even it out. You don't have to go in with your eraser tool. You just go back to your base color and, and you know, paint on top of it so it evens out a bit. See, now I'm kind of getting it more towards just that edge that I want. Okay. And I'm not sure if I want I don't know if I want I will just put I'll just put a couple extra I know it looks kind of funky like this but once you add the other fur elements on top of it it'll work so you never want to be painting fur and having it be just a flat shellac of color like you do need to make an effort to, to get some variation on it okay <coughs> and it, trust me you could play around with this forever <laughs> and never feel like it's a hundred percent or great or whatever but anyway so it looks soft it looks kind of fuzzy to me um, so the next step is going to be adding some um, for for like strokes um, and kind of some lines to kind of give it that fuzziness here and there. Um, for for me, there's many brushes you can you can choose this brush, this brush, 
Um, I prefer this brush, so the dashed line, and I make it down to a size one with, with no spacing. And then I would go in here and I was just kind of, I'll just kind of paint some little, some lines in here. And then I'll make sure I zoom all the way in really, really close. And I'll make sure I get here on the edge. And I kind of use these fuzzy lines as like my guide. I'm going to add. And since I'm here, I might as well do some. Okay. And then I'm going to go in here, and of course, fur is going to have some. I'll switch over to the dark. It's going to have some dark, especially right here. Because I'm trying to enhance what I've already done, right? where I've put the shadow naturally. And then I'll just kind of play around with these with these colors. And then the high the the very highlight color, you're only going to use very sparingly and only in the places where the fur would naturally kind of have a few moments of it. It's not like you would put these colors like everywhere, right? And the reason for that is because it's just not how um like light it, sunlight's not everywhere all the time unless you're you know you're fully exposed to the sun and it does sometimes when you're walking you know with clothing like parts of your the bag on your hip will get a little you know hit of a sunshine but the shoulder strap is not going to get su full sunshine you know what I mean like the way that light hits you know objects it's just not like full sun all the time there's moments in whatever it's hitting where it's not hitting that and so you want to be careful when you add these light color the you know the brightest lightest colors that it's purposeful that it's making sense it's not it's not just all everywhere okay and you're gonna have to just figure this out you're gonna have to play around with how you would how are your lines not everybody's fur is the same like if you look in the game and people who've been making, you know, things with fur, like everybody's doing it just a little bit different, which is fantastic. But you're also welcome to do it this way. But maybe how you paint on your lines is just, you know, just enough different. Now, if you zoom out, you see how it's looking, you know. Now, this is all very same, same, same. I might actually want to... Um, get some contrasting color in here like that's a bit orange you'll have to kind of figure out your your colors maybe I actually want something more of like a golden like a golden brown in here oh that's just too I need something more neutral like a beige or something You'll have to kind of zoom in and out to see how that looks, you know? I really don't like this. This color is not really making me happy. And that's part of the process too. You'll, you'll have to kind of figure it out. It's too yellow. Eh, but it kind of works. I don't know. So honestly, if I was going to make this coat a, a fur coat, like a true, like, I would, <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of work. If you do a coat this big, you're going to have to come in and uh, you do have to paint, you know, the whole thing. Um, that's part of the, the creation process, though, if you're going to commit to, to doing fur and then commit to doing all the fur, you know, or just stick to fur accents and don't, don't paint an entire coat. Um, and it, it will go a little bit faster, you know, as time goes on. 
but this is definitely the process. This is okay. So that's one. So this is one way to do fur. Okay. Um, another brush that I that I've sh demonstrated before in the live on Facebook um, was this same brush, um, but instead of going horizontal, this one's vertical, um, and you do change that size down to like a two. I think it's like a two. You can just highlight it, enter that here. I turn down the spacing a bit. You can play with different angles. Um, but this way, you, you know, this one's kind of a fun brush to do for fur because um, these little gaps of space create like such a great and beautiful um, way for the, the color underneath to come through. Um, and it's really nice, like look, when you cross over with another color, you get all these really nice um, variations and texture and and whatnot and I really love this one for this kind of coat because um, you can just get so much more coverage without you know and this and this really lets that all that work you did on the bottom layers to kind of shine through a bit more And I should be doing this all on a different brush, but I'm not, so that's, that's my bad. But this is kind of like another fun, you know, maybe this is more dark here. And let's look at that on the bottom. So you can see from the top and the bottom, it, it does create a different, a different kind of texture. Um, you'll have to play around. This is kind of really fun for, for m like, this is such a, a neutral brown. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm able to capture, but this is really fun to do with multicolored uh, kinds of fur, fur in different, you know, more vibrant, bright colors, um, that kind of thing purses this is really a nice brush to use with um, fur that has different kinds of brushes okay let's get in here okay but you'll just have to take the time to figure it out you know, what you want to do, being mindful that there are, you know, color dynamics that still have to happen when you're painting. And you can also come in and mix and match. Like, um, like I could put this kind of shaggy stuff down on a big garment like this and then come back up to my, to my line here. And I can, you know, intermingle some lines in with this other brush for, you know, more texture type fun. Let's get this going here. But it, this is just, it is a tremendous amount of work to do a large garment like this. Sometimes it's nice just to stick this on a, on a bag or a hat not do these really ginormous coats. Okay. Let's just get a few here on the edge because the light's going to come a lot on the edge here. Okay, let's 
take a look. Yeah. So that works as well. I think that that um, brush with the lines in it just makes it a little bit more feathery and shaggy. Um, but as you can see, how you know this is again why it's important to have this sort of dappled base color that's just not all solid because when you do paint with these brushes and they're not you know you're not covering the whole space with lines that dappled base color comes through and just kinds of it, you know it's like a partnership you know it just it all works together to create this more cohesive uh, dynamic fur than if you had just kept it you know one solid color you know so just keep that in mind um, and then for people who ha do have digital art experience who are experienced with uh, you know using Photoshop or procreate or you know whatever um, the brush that I would say would be your best friend for painting your your realistic fur is going to be this brush here it's um, like what is a second and a half row? I don't know the the one towards the bottom this one here and you can change the angle around <clears throat> I would make the size a bit smaller and really keep your opacity and flow very very low no spacing and um, And you can see, like, this is how I'm going to get some of those kind of smudgy, smoky fur, fur, you know, like what they teach us for fur. I, I, I haven't really committed to doing this way in any of my textiles. I was playing around with it a bit earlier to see if I could even teach or show you how, you know, because you know what I'm about to do. You know what I'm doing. So um, this is more for like advanced stuff, but if you want, you can use this brush to be getting some more of this, you know, fuzzy fur. You're going to have to really go in and apply those painting, um, painting principles here. But as you can see, you can get some, and you know you can adjust your size here to get you know more finer strokes. I can go back in with a little bit of you know create some more. Uh, it's so hard to talk and paint, <laughs> I swear. But you see what I'm doing here. Like, you know, I'm creating the, that variation, you know, that they tell us to do. Um, and then you can go down even smaller. I think it's like a five, maybe a four. And then now we can go ahead and go into, um, you know, creating all of this. It is it almost impossible for me to explain what I'm doing? But I'm hoping that just by showing you, you can see, you know. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm sort of creating more of like a, let's see how it translates from afar. Yeah. I mean, you're, it looks, again, this is why it's so important to look at your work in perspective, you know, going back and forth. Um, because what you think is happening, you know, way up close is may not read the same from 
being super far away. So always go back and forth to double check what you're doing. And again, I haven't painted fur much this way because I'm not like, I, I mean, I'm an okay digital person. I'm not, I'm not, I am not a professional. I, I don't paint these amazing digital art things that you see, you know, many digital artists do. Um, I have a very modest art background. I'm self-taught with a lot of this. And so, you know, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. I'm sure that um, you guys see, you know, ways to do this better. And I'm so excited for you to see what you make and for you to share that with, with everybody. Um, I'm just doing my best here to try. To, I'm just trying to give you guys some some options, okay? Um, for me, uh, this looks very painterly and nice, but um, you'd have to take it, you know, to that next level. I'm just trying to show you, you know, in this tool, uh, you know, the, br the brush presets are very limited, um, but it's still achievable to kind of create these painterly things. Um, but, you know, I'd go back to, you know, I'd go back to maybe this being a one, and I would go in now with, um, and you still might have to, oh, uh, maybe not at full opacity. Yeah. You still might have to come back in with some paint lines, you know, over this. And if you are an artist and you're cringing at how I'm showing this, I'm so sorry, but I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to show some options with the tools that we have. Within this studio tool, just look at it from a distance now. Yeah, it's it's a different kind of shaggy fur. I mean, I think maybe these colors aren't the best, but I mean, I'm, I really hope that you guys can see that there are some really cool options here. Um, and there's some different ways to achieve, you know, some fur-like stuff. It's definitely um, something that's gonna take a little bit of time. Don't rush it. Um, I, you know, make make something with fur and then walk away for a little bit and then come back and, you know, give it a good critical eye. Get get some like Tim Gunn narrative voice in your head going, you know, do, do you need to edit it? Is it cohesive? Is it, you know, is it doing what you want? I'm kind of just going crazy here with line. Well, Anyway, so you can see there's a couple different ways. I mean, I think that's kind of interesting from a distance, right? It kind of looks like a hot mess jumbled up. But there's something more smooth about what I've done on the right versus on the left. Um, a little bit more painterly. Um, lots of time and effort you're going to have to put into um, to doing that. Okay. All right. So this is just one example of how to do fur. Um, and something else I wanna go over really quickly though, and I don't know if it's just cause it's the winter season or um, I'm gonna turn, I'm just gonna turn off everything here and I'm gonna make one more invisible detail. Okay. Let me just show you guys something quickly. Um, let's get a new square. And let's just, um, okay. Because it's winter and uh, everybody's like kind of making these um, white fur, the white fur for like the holiday stuff. Um, you guys are going to pure white and you're just putting down like pure white, okay? 
I'm seeing a lot of this in the store right now. And this is definitely white. <laughs> we see a lot of this, okay? But there's nothing here that you're doing much to create um, shading on the white. And white is not like just white. So what I recommend is instead of putting down pure white, um, put down like a little bit of a, like a very light gray. See how it's not pure white? So put down this little, this little gray um, right here. And let's go ahead and just, let me show you how you would paint this so that you would have some variations in this. Uh, so as you can see, as you can see, it's, it's got some, um, it's not a pure white. Okay. And my, uh, here's my pure white that I just used, right, on here. But now you can go in with a low opacity and flow and you can drop in, look at how, I don't know, now you can drop in some, some highlights here of the white and it's actually gonna make your, you know, your gray, which is white, um, stand out a bit more, okay? And then you're gonna go down to your gray color, a little bit darker gray, and you're gonna hit the underside here. Because remember, we kinda want, we're trying to give some variation to this white so it's not just a big clump of white. Okay. All right. Because you want to be using white as your highlight color so that it stands out more. And then another thing you might do is go up here to to like a cream, like a cream color and get some maybe a little bit of cream in here cuz white is Remember, white is all colors. White is not just, it may be just like a little bit of a pale blue. Tr and trust me with this, trust me with this process. You don't have to do your, all your whites this way, but I'm just trying to show you. If you do something like this, right, I and mean then maybe even just like a really pale pink in here. And now grab your darker gray and again kind of create this, there's a bottom and a top, right? And then now grab your fur, your fur pen, <laughs> a fur pen, I don't know. Uh, grab your pure white again. Let's grab the purest white, it's FFFF, right? And now you can also go in and create some of these little fur lines with the white. Or even, even just um, with this one here. Right? Maybe it's this one here because you want white to be like popping on this right but in order for white to pop on this and feel white it has to be something that's not white underneath okay something that's a bit gray I should have been doing all of this on a different brush. Oh well, my bad. These are reasons why it's important to uh, not do everything on the same brush. I'm just trying to show. How cool it looks when you, oh, that's too dark when you don't just go straight for a pure white. 
and then you go in with your you know your brushes here I'm just trying to get it to show up a bit more it was almost a bit too bright but now you can see where it, you, you're going you just have to kind of trust it that it's it's going to read white it's going to show up fine you know I'm doing sort of these ratchet levels of lines but um, this will just read so much more like white fur than if you just just stay with your singular blob of white okay um, there's lots of really cool tutorials on how to paint white um, if you do a Google image search or just do digitally painting white and you'll see that it's they don't just start off with pure white and you know make it and see from a distance it'll still read white it doesn't this isn't gray but this is not my best example but it, I just wanted to quickly you know highlight that and show you um, you know that when you're painting this kind of fur that fur comes in all kinds of colors and like where you start with a color even like if you start with like like a mid red you know you're going to be putting oranges and maybe some purples in here or you know something you know what whenever you're doing your fur you know you're not going to be just sticking to the the pure you know this you're not done like if you do this in your garments you're not um and then you're just and then you just publish it like it's such a missed opportunity for you to to really make something special with this fur and it's not really you're not really painting much you know what I mean like it's just not um, it's just not the best it could be you know honestly and gems are so expensive it's so expensive to buy some stuff and you know people are spending real money like if you're gonna create something like take take a hot minute to to make the effort to make something kind of special and see just even like that is is enough and then you know oh it's just a size 10 yeah and you don't have to be a size one I mean play around with these you know maybe your your brushes are a bit bigger you know who knows um, everybody's gonna have their own unique you know fur fur thing that they do and I, I am here for it. I am so excited to see what y'all do. I literally just can't wait. But just keep in mind when you're doing your fur that you should have, you know, a mid-tone. And then maybe with this fur, with this red, I might actually do kind of like a, you know, I might throw in a few and then maybe I want to be a little flirty with a little bit of something like that okay and then from a distance it looks variegated it looks interesting um, there's all kinds of color dynamics happening in there okay so just make an effort um, practice play around um, you know do your best and um, if you want to do this, you know, maybe this more painterly effect here on this right side here, um, <coughs> I know there's some really great YouTubes on, you know, how do you paint fur, you know, with Procreate and Photoshop and those brushes and like the smudging they do and um, the opacity blur stuff. Like we just don't have that in this tool. But I'm telling you, the magic for you is going to be, you know, in this sort of spiky brush and then in this sort of painterly brush. And um, just remember to change the angle around, play around with the size, the, spa the spacing and the opacity and the flow. Um, and just practice, 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 practice and then play around. OK, so I hope this explains um, some of the first stuff and why it's important to have multiple colors happening in your fur and I am so excited to see what you make and how you make it and 
you know, ready to shop, went and buy the things that you make. All right. Take care.